CD Projekt Red's reputation might have taken a pretty big hit with Cyberpunk's release, but their reputation for having great DLC is still very much intact. In this video, I'm going to talk about things I thought were great, things I thought were terrible, and share things that I just think are funny. You know how sometimes with shows, there's a new season and then suddenly everything feels just a little bit off? Like the director changed or they ran out of source material, Game of Thrones. And suddenly everything just drops in quality, very significantly. Game of Thrones. Well, that's not what happened here. This DLC is exactly more of the base game. So if you enjoyed the base game, you're gonna like this DLC too. V does at some point say some stuff that I would have rather she didn't. And balls. But really, the DLC is just more of the main game. This game is set in a place called Dogtown. I don't know why it's called Dogtown. I haven't seen a single dog. Once again, just like the base game, this DLC is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I don't have any, like, keen analysis for you or anything like that, but just look at this shit. It's gorgeous. Look how much stuff is on screen in this screenshot. It blows my mind, but it looks great. There are now airdrops with high-tier loot. In one airdrop, a worker sends out a message saying that he's been enslaved, and he wants whoever reads this message, whoever receives this message, to send help, but rather than do anything to help, V puts it into their pocket and never thinks about it again. If you're replaying the game and you're wondering, when is the best time to play the DLC? I would say it's right after you finish the Voodoo Boys quest line, because it has to be, but before you hijack the float with Takamura. At the beginning, when you're in that place that looks a bit like Portal 2, Somi is like, Compeki Plaza, why did you do that? Why did you rob that? But she says this right after admitting that she works with the president. If I was V, I would say, uh, Compeki who? who wh what are you talking about? I would not say, oh, I did it because of ambition or whatever she says. I thought V was awfully trusting, telling government agents about all the crimes we've done. You're looking a little pale. <laughs> Cyberpunk is very good at utilizing the freedom of its setting to create memorable moments that would be outside the scope of other settings. What the f did I just say? Imagine in Peaky Blinders they took some celebrity woman and then they decided to make her out of metal and then they decided to have her fly around singing and then get eaten by a giant spider. It would be very weird in a Peaky Blinders setting. You know? But in Cyberpunk, we don't even bat an eye. Oh, Lizzie Wizzy's up to her weird shit again. That's what I'm talking about. The setting lets you do weird stuff like that and you don't bat an eye. It just makes the world so much more interesting to be in. In the original Cyberpunk, it's kind of hard to tell if the gig you're doing is gonna be like some high effort content or just fetch the thing. But the gigs in this DLC are all very much worth doing. They all have the shitty turquoise gig marker, but actually I think they're all yellow quest marker tier. And if you've played the game, you know what I'm on about there. <laughs> Read. Read. Uh oh. This DLC has a bunch of new characters. There's two main ones, however. Solomon Reed and Somi. Solomon Reed, I liked him a lot. He's not such a great secret agent, but what he lacks in secret agent ability, he makes up for in loyalty. Somi is the whole Phantom Liberty thing. Her design is really cool too. It's a visual representation of how much Myers has taken from her. I liked it a lot. You ever notice Songbird's construct form is much more human? She doesn't have all that robotic stuff on her like she does in real life. It tells you quite a lot without saying Saying anything. She could have made her avatar anything, she could have changed her avatar in any way and that's how she changes it. I've seen the kind of avatars most people have. I've seen Second Life. Hers is nothing like that. She just wants to look normal. Myers. Myers is a massive piece of shit but you still kinda like her because of what happens at the beginning. However, all my homies do hate her. During one ending, I was talking so much shit that I was worried she might have me killed. But actually, she was very chill about it. Rosalind, wait. Don't contact me again. <laughs> Roslyn, wait. Don't you ever speak to me again. Alex. I know Alex dances around a bit, but unfortunately that doesn't make you main character tier. I'm sorry, Alex. A quest or two more would have been really good for her. The characters in Cyberpunk are great because the biggest critique of them is always just, I wish there was a bit more of them. We get like 10 hours of Judy in the main game and I'm still thinking, man, this game could have used more Judy. That's how good the characters are in this game. Kurt Hansen. He's meant to be the antagonist. He's meant to be the big guy, the leader of Dogtown, but you don't really care about him that much. He's just kind of a guy. He's a bit of an obstacle. He's just kind of there. 
Um, he throws great parties. It's a bit hard to hate him. But honestly, he was pretty chill. We kill like a hundred of his men and sneak into his private party. And rather than like kill us or hang us or anything like that, he's just like, ah, get out of here, you little rascals. Go on. Like he was pretty tolerant, honestly. For me, the worst thing he did, the most annoying thing he did, was he would just mic spam all throughout Dogtown for 24 7. Wars, not in Dogtown. Curious. Taxes, who the f needs them? What leverage they had in on Dogtown. God, can I this guy shut up? <laughs> I'm not someone who cares about celebrities, but when I hear a company's hired one, it immediately annoys me. It's so much money just so people on Reddit can soy out about, oh my god, they've got this person in the game. It just seems like such a waste. But joke's on them, because before Cyberpunk, I didn't know who Keanu was, I didn't know who Idris Elba was, I didn't know who Grimes was, the only celebrity I recognised was f***ing this guy. So I got lucky, but my point is, the trend of hiring big names is not a good one in my opinion. Yes, some people might buy the game just because Keanu's in it, but how many people would that really be? If they happen to be a very good actor, and they happen to suit the role perfectly, and they happen to be available, the stars all align, go ahead, do it. But it seems like at this point they're just getting celebrities for the sake of getting celebrities. I haven't spoken about any spoilers yet, now I'm going to talk about spoilers, I'm going to talk about all the endings, I'm going to spoil every single f thing I can. So if you haven't played the game, just don't watch. Okay, stop watching now. I will tank the retention time, don't worry. And I am talking about the main game too. If you haven't played the main game, get out. This is a private club now. You're not cool enough if you haven't played all of it. Okay, three, two, one. All right, we're officially in cool club. If you're listening to this, you are officially cool. A great thing about this DLC is there's a decent argument for every single ending. Well, there's like four endings, but there's a decent argument for all of them. They're all defendable. That said, there is a categorically best ending to this DLC. It's the one where So-Me goes to the moon, because in that ending, not only does she finally get the freedom that she so desperately sought and in my opinion deserved, you also get to kill Reed, which is pretty cool. I get So-Me betraying you is meant to be like a really big deal, but I just didn't care. You, you kind of see it coming. I was just like, yeah, I get it. Enjoy your flight. Maybe I'm just a pushover. Maybe if I was an alpha male Chad, I would get some domestic abuse on the go or something, but I really just didn't care. By that point, I would have just helped her anyway. I get some people People would be really angry there. Oh, I was only helping you because of this, but by that point, nah. Initially, I was only helping her to get a cure, but once so me and V are friends, it's a no-brainer. Get on the rocket ship. I leave you alone for five minutes. Move it, let's and go. And you get caught and beaten up. Reed, you have not been impressing me today. Oh yeah? Make me. No, V. Let's just go. <laughs> This poor guy. The worst thing about sending Somi to the moon is that V is just left in the middle of the fucking airport with the entire NUSA army after her. And they know exactly where you are because they just saw a fucking rocket ship take off. Like, how is V going to survive that? How is V going to get out of that? But it just doesn't even matter. The next scene, V just kind of teleports out. She's pissed off the entire NUSA. She's going to have to keep her head down for the rest of her life, or at least until this blows over. So what does she do? She sits right down the road from where the airport is and has a chat with Johnny. She would be found so quick. Oh, they'll never think to find me here, right down the fucking road. For the fallen. Body, soul, or both. Scorpion. <laughs> F off. The scorpion. The scorpion. <laughs> Fearless man. Laid down his life for his family. To scorpion. <laughs> to scorpion. F sake. What a waste. When you think about it, So Me only kidnapped the president because Reed took away her freedom by forcing her to join the FIA. She wanted her freedom back. So when you think about it, it's really Reed's fault that the president got kidnapped. God, that guy pisses me off. It says in Reed's bio thing that he was once comparable to Morgan Blackhand. Morgan Blackhand is one of the strongest people in the cyberpunk universe. Adam Smasher considers Morgan Blackhand his rival, and Adam Smasher is meant to be one of the toughest guys. And we kill this guy in one f***ing shot. When they said he was comparable to Morgan Blackhand, they probably meant like his fashion sense or his clothes or, you know, maybe they, they were the same height. Like, I, they were not comparing combat ability because this guy sucks. Adam Smasher, would Adam smash this guy so f***ing easy? I feel like he was conflicted in his way of helping so me. He was so loyal to the NUSA, but he did know that her life would be kind of shit if he captured her. And so I think it was that confliction within him 
that lets us just kill him so easily. That, or the devs couldn't be bothered to make a boss fight, I don't know. It's possible that Reed actually hasn't forgiven So Me and wants to get back at her, but I don't really think that's the case. I think, yeah, there might be some residual anger, especially after So Me almost killed the president, but he does fundamentally care about her. Her hands might be dead, but Morgan is alive! This guy's even worse! The thing that annoyed me about the last Airbender ending was that V just smiles into the camera. Like, nobody should be smiling into the camera like that in a f***ing cyberpunk game. I get what they're trying to say, that there's a whole life of opportunity ahead of them, and that V is now dead and they've lost everything that they once had, but now it's an opportunity for a new life. I get why they did it that way, because otherwise it would be a very sad ending. But seeing that V actually does have a bit of a positive outlook, it makes the ending not completely sad. Yes, they've lost everything, but they do see that opportunity. Actually, never mind, it's alright. Welcome to the world of the faces in the crowd, V. But the problem with this ending is that you have to betray everyone in order to get there. Johnny? F*** Johnny. So me? F*** so me. Everyone I ever knew in my life? F*** everyone I ever knew in my life. That one ending, where you make the stupid choice and you side with Reed, and you go in that f terrifying facility with this crazy monster that was really horrible it was great but it was horrible during that scary ending i had a moment i have never been scared like this playing a video game before you can hear the f***ing just genuine terror on my voice at one point i was it was like 2 a.m nighttime in my house i'm sneaking through this horrible lab with this monster thing chasing me and it just dives at me in a way that shouldn't make any logical sense Ooh. Oh, oh shit! In hell! <laughs> that scared the f out of me. Jesus Christ! Ah! Oh. It was scary, alright? It was a crazy ending too. It made me very much appreciate that yes, I made the right choice on my first playthrough to not side with Reed, to not randomly ice break this lady. The way she fights back the Blackwall AIs so hard just to save you, there's no way this woman isn't worth saving or doesn't care about V at all, like some people say. Her dishonesty was desperation, not malevolence. At the very end, she decides to come clean anyway, at the potential cost of everything she's done to get here. That, I would not do that. I'd be saying to V, yeah, okay, I see you, V. I'll send you the cure in the post. I'd be bullshitting all the way up to the moon. Time for me to fly. And honesty, much appreciated, V. Best of luck, Saul. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> you f no, I should have killed him. Like we've established, Myers is kind of a piece of shit. She massacres that entire airport, doesn't she, just to get to us. But Reed is Myers. Everything Myers wants to do, Reed is perfectly happy to do. I feel like Reed deserves just a little bit more shit, honestly. Earlier I said that Song deserves a second chance at life. The reason I say that is because she was 19 when she was forced to join the NUSA, and then for 10 years she worked with them at great cost to her own mental and physical well-being. I feel like at that point, you've probably earned a second chance. V might be the only Merc strong enough to actually give her that second chance. You've got to fight against all of Barghest and the NUSA just to do so. What other Merc is going to do that? Pan Am is not doing that shit. We don't even know if on Tycho they'll actually help her or just use her the exact same way Myers did. So we struggle and fight that hard against all those people for something that will probably end terribly anyway. But that was my favorite ending definitely, the one where the stars all align and she gets her chance at freedom. She's free. Slammed at home. She has just a bit of what I lacked entirely. F luck. I love that whenever you hear people talk about this game, for both the base game and the DLC, nobody can agree. People can't even agree on the characters. The characters are quite human, they've all got flaws. So a lot of people, it doesn't matter which character you pick, there's people who hate them. People hate Johnny, people hate Judy, people hate Pan Am. A lot of people don't like Songbird. She does spend the whole game lying to you after all. So you get a lot of, you know, everyone's all over the place. Nobody's ever gonna agree on one of the endings, but that's part of the fun. It was a great DLC. I wish more companies would give this much of a shit about their DLC. So in summary, if the base game was an orange, this DLC would be like having three or four more segments 
of that orange.